Maybe one of your sleeves turned out a little shorter than what you'd like and you'd like to extend it by adding a cuff. Maybe you've sewn a rectangle cuff onto something and folded it up and something doesn't lie right. We're gonna refine the feet and the shape of these cuffs. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and it's 100% about sewing today. It's about cuffs, although what you're gonna see today here could apply to knit cuffs. The only difference is that woven cuffs are one-to-one -one with the circumference of wherever you're sewing them onto. And knit cuffs tend to be a little smaller, so you'd have to account for that. Maybe a lot of you have sewn a dolman type pattern where you think, oh, you know, I'd like to just have this be a little bit longer. You can add a cuff on there and add a good two inches. Or maybe you just wanna add that because it looks cool. The cuff can be either just extending the length of the sleeve or so it's decorative. It doesn't extend that you just fold it up and it looks pretty. So usually those options are the ones that you see in most designs. I have sewn a bunch of cuffs onto a bunch of patterns. What they have in common is that probably 80% of them, the cuff piece is a rectangle. It is acceptable. I mean, I'm not saying they look horrendous, but they could be improved. Only a few of the patterns I've sewn that have a cuff have an actual shape in the cuff to give it the shape that this and the part of the sleeve has. Let me show you an example. I've been playing around. I'm doing something that's a thrift clip that's coming soon. I'm just playing on adding different types of cuffs onto that dolman sleeve so you can see what the effect could be. So let's see how a rectangle cuff could look and the type of cuff I'm aiming for. Here is the rectangle cuff just basted onto the bottom of the sleeve. So if I just wanted to leave it like that just to extend the sleeve, it is acceptable, but you have this rectangle shape here where there's a curve and when you wear it, this might poke out a little bit. It might be just more noticeable that it's just a rectangle. I would like to use this cuff to improve it, the one that goes in like that, this type of shape that goes in and then it creates this will get you a cuff that fits the same circumference but it will have that shape there and it will go a little smaller and it will just hang nicer on the arm. You can see that that little cuff that I showed you second has a little angle going in so it will be a little narrower at the bottom of the cuff and it will just match the shape under here much better if you want it extended. Say you wanted that cuff to be folded up, not extending the sleeve. Let's see how the rectangle cuff can look. Now I've taken the same rectangle cuff and just pasted it on inside the sleeve. And this is the type of cuff that you would sew like this and then extend and then you fold up like this. So because this is a rectangle, it's gonna pull a little, it's not gonna be super smooth because it just doesn't follow the shape here. So you can see you get a bit of puckering right here. It is possible, but you can see it's not very smooth. So that's why in this case, you would use this type of cuff that goes out like that by half an inch. It still has the same circumference here. And then that gives you a cuff that goes out like this. So when you sew it on, it will go like this. And then when you fold it up, it will just have more space to go around this area here. So you can see in this case, if I wanted to fold this up, that little angle that I achieved on the second cuff is going out. It's not going in. So that will just give you more space underneath to fold up and not have everything all packed there when you fold it up. And that's something I've noticed when I've sewn cuffs that are folded up that are rectangles, you get a lot of puckering and it just doesn't look as smooth as it could. So let's see a little bit of paper where I've drawn three rectangles. One is the typical rectangle and on the ones that are on the bottom of the screen, we're gonna do the small changes. If you wanna add a cuff to a sleeve, just measure the circumference of the bottom of your sleeve at the seam line. So not at the raw edge, a little further in. And I have some paper here cut out. I have the length here that I need, including seam allowance, cause we're gonna have one seam here. So that's included. I have three pieces. Now all of these are four inches up here. You can make it narrower if you want. This is just what I'm doing. This is a typical rectangle that you would see in a lot of patterns for a cuff. And it's okay, but it can be improved. The thing I find with a rectangle is that you're sewing it onto an area of the body that does have some shape. And sometimes the, the sleeve has a little slant as well. So when you sew a rectangle on it, you might get some areas just poking out a little. So I wanna show you two options here. Let's see the easy modification you can do to your rectangle cuff to give it the angle going in for a cuff that you wanna sew onto a bottom of a sleeve that's gonna be just extended, just on its own like that. I'll show you how to create that, how it's sewn, and then how it looks. I'm gonna draw a cuff that's gonna work for a cuff that you just want to use to extend a sleeve. So you don't wanna be folding that cuff up. It will just be sewn onto the bottom of the sleeve and it will just make it a little longer. In that case, we want to bring this in. So that is the same measurement as the rectangle here. 
they're all the same. It's just that we want to create a sort of dot situation here and that's going to give you better shaping underneath the arm. So from the middle right there, I've drawn a dot and I've drawn a line in half an inch. And now I'm just going to join these up. And now this is going to be the cuff piece. This is the one that's coming in and I've sewn them all together. The way that you manage them is the same. This one that has the angle going in, I just did a little snip there so it's easier to just push the seam allowance open here. And you're just going to put the seams onto each other wrong sides together and you're going to get this type of angle. Okay, here is the end of the dolman sleeve that I just want to make longer and extend. So I don't want to fold this up. And this is why I wanted that shaping that takes away some of the width here. So that it sort of follows that shape. You can see it goes in like that. And this is the type of cuff I used for this type of situation right here. So it was basically just sewing it there, snipping into there, and then folding it wrong sides together to create a round thing. And then the way that this is sewn is matching up that little seam. You can see the angle that you get there with the seam under the dolman sleeve and then just sewing it on the round right sides together and then you will just extend it and you'll get a longer dolman sleeve that has a nicer shape like that if you would have just done the regular rectangle this would be really pokey out like that and sometimes it could poke out here on the top as well use your original cuff piece and then just take it away from the inside like this so this is something that you can make a change to to your cuff pattern if you have a pattern that does not have a cuff and you want to add one on you can go ahead and do that now on the other situation that you want to create the cuff that would be folded up let's see how to modify that rectangle piece so that it creates that angle going out and that your feet is going to be much more anatomic much more natural when you fold it up now if you want to add a cuff that you want to fold up on the sleeve then you want to do the exact opposite as here and just bring it out so i've done the same thing divided it in half there extended it by half an inch and then do this this is the typical rectangle one this is the one that's coming out. I'm just going to open up these seams. I did a little snip there as well. I'm going to put them onto each other here. And this cuff, instead of going in like this, it goes out. I have the type of cuff that you want to fold up. I think they look cool as well. And in that case, you need a little extra ease right here to conform to this curve here. So if I extended this, you can see this goes out. And this is where you need this type of cuff that goes out like that. So it still fits the same circumference here. It's just that it goes a little bigger here so that when you fold it, you have enough space and then it doesn't end up looking all bunched up around this area. So in this case, this one is sewn different. You get your cuff and you put it inside the garment, the right side of the cuff to the wrong side of the garment, matching up the seam, sewing it on the round, and then you would serge that of course so that it's neat. And then you would just fold it up like that. And that's how you would have a cuff with that shape and it would sit much better on this type of shape on the dolman sleeve there. If you see a pattern that has a rectangle cuff, just use the same pattern piece from your pattern. You could just add on this little shape half an inch out coming out and then you would get a nice looking result right here. So I have two different types of cuffs. You can see that the measurement here, what's going to be sewn onto the circumference of the sleeve is the same. It's just that we're going to have this different type of shaping. As you can see, the original length of the rectangle was the same for all of them, whether it's a rectangle rectangle, whether it's got a shape going out or a shape going in. The circumference of the cuff is not going to change. What is going to change is the shape of the seam that is going to unite underneath here. Now I've shown you these examples on a dolman, but if you have a short sleeve, a regular short sleeve, and you want to add this on or fold it up or whatever you want to do, it would be exactly the same. Just extend your sleeve piece, measure it from one raw edge to the other, get that same length, which will include the seam allowance. And that is your base for the rectangle cuff. And then you can do your little tweaks on that little piece, make sure it's one to one and that everything's going to match. And you're going to have really, really nice shaped cuffs that are going to look a little bit more refined than the just typical rectangle cuff. Another way your cuffs can look super good is if they're cut on the bias. Now I've only seen this on one pattern. It actually gave me a really good idea. Up to that point, I'd only seen cuffs that were cut on the straight of grain. And this is a tulip summer top from Wardrobe by Me. This one originally has it designed to be on the bias. And if it's on the bias, you don't need special angles or special shapes. Your cuff can be a perfect rectangle. But because it's on the bias, it's going to conform and fit really, really well. So let's see a little bit about that. This is the cuff pattern piece that needs to be cut on the bias. You can see the grain line mark there is on the bias. So the way I can fit it on my little piece of fabric is just flipping it this way. 
so I've transferred my arrow to the wrong side of this pattern and I'm just going to align this here making sure that this arrow is on the grain line my pattern piece of course is slanted at a 45 degree angle this is one of the cuff pieces you just fold it right sides together align the short ends and sew them together at 3 8 seam allowance as I'm manipulating these cuffs I'm just gonna be extra careful with them because they are cut on the bias so I will just be careful to not stretch them out. After sewing the side seams, pressing the seam to the back, I have the edge of the sleeve right there. And now I can attach the cuff but from the wrong side of the blouse. The seam of the cuff will meet the seam of the sleeve underneath. We'll put the cuff over the sleeve so that the sleeve is inside. The pattern piece is slightly smaller than the sleeve circumference but because it's cut on the bias, it will mold perfectly to the circumference here when we pin it on. After sewing the cuff, I serge the edges and now when you open this, the seam will be on the right side of the blouse. I want the cuff to stay out and the inside of the blouse not come out so I'm going to do a row of understitching right here. Keeping the seam allowance extended like that, I will be sewing on top of the wrong side of the blouse and the seam allowance under there on the edge. So you can see my side seam and I'm sewing from the wrong side. Okay, after sewing that seam I have understitched it. The seam is actually on the right side of the blouse here and the cuff will come folded over like this and on the inside it's going to be so neat and you have that understitch there holding the inside of the blouse on the inside so it won't be seen. This is the right side of the blouse and this is the cuff extended. The seam is right in there and then you fold the cuff out and because it's cut on the bias it molds perfectly to the shape here of the curve of the sleeve. It's not straight here, it does have a nice curve. Because my fabric is really sloppy I'm going to do a little hand tack under there just to keep it in place and also here on the top where the shoulder seam is I'll put a few pins here and I'll just do a little invisible sewing from the inside and that's it. It looks really beautiful. Dolman type sleeves with a little cuff. You can see that the cuff on the dolman sleeve is cut on the bias and it's folded up. It's understitched super neatly. Now that cuff, it was designed to be on the bias. So if I measured the piece of the cuff and then measured my circumference, you know, it would seem that it's shorter and that it's not going to fit. But because the bias is on the bias, it's going to give. You want it to be a little bit snug. Later on, <laughs> I made a Melody Dolman and I actually remembered this bias cuff situation that I had sewn previously and I decided to make my rectangle cuff from the Melody. Just the same but just cut it on the bias so let's see the small tiny change I made to that one. This is the original cuff and you cut it on the fold twice but I want to cut mine on the bias so I have created an extended piece that's not on the fold so I just doubled it and I drew my line at the 45 degree angle so I can place it on the grain line correctly angled to 45 degrees on the fabric but I don't want to cut the original length if I cut it on the bias it will end up being too big because it is on the bias it will grow a little bit in its circumference so I'm gonna fold away about an inch and a half right there and that is the piece I'm gonna cut on the bias and then when I want to sew it onto the completed sleeve edge, it'll be the perfect size, it'll be perfect because it's cut on the bias. I have placed my pattern piece with the grain line straight, you know, parallel to the grain line like that. So I'll just go ahead and cut this carefully and this is what I'm going to sew to the edge of the sleeve. So there you go, I just made it a little bit shorter. The construction for these cuffs is all the same. The Melody Dolman cuff is the one that's supposed to be folded up. So you place it on the inside of the garment, you sew it and then you fold it up. The same technique that the Summer Tulip cuff was sewn. I think it's another good alternative as well to sew on your cuffs if you want them just to look softer and more anatomic. On the bias works really, really well. You will see that my thrift flip has an added cuff and I'm really enjoying making that one. So this was just a sneak peek. I decided to make a separate standalone video on cuffs because this is general sewing. It's not just linked to one pattern. So I hope this is helpful for your future sews with cuffs. And maybe you have things in your wardrobe, might want to tweak a little, make a little longer. Maybe you have a scrap left, you can add a cuff. I always get asked, you know, how do you make your dolman sleeve a little longer? 
I'd say the easiest way is to just add on a little cuff and you get a nice amount, two inches on an arm. It's pretty substantial, I think it makes a difference. That's all from me, I'll see you again very soon on this channel with more sewing. Bye.